Hey guys, welcome to episode number 578. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday. And today we are going on a very special trip to the NEC's annual convention. That's right, the Northeast Council of Aquarium Societies has an annual convention. You've probably seen some of my videos in the past covering this event. It is by far the best event to go to if you belong to an aquarium club in the Northeast. They have a ton of great speakers, they have a gigantic vendor room, and they have probably the largest aquarium auction in the Northeast and it is a blast. I've probably been to about five of these and for the last three years I've gone as my aquarium box and we've set up a booth. I did the same thing this year. I had a ton of fun, met a lot of great people, saw a lot of friends from past years and we got to talking and we had a blast at the show. If you didn't get a chance to go this year, you'll get to see a lot of footage from this year's event and you have an entire year to register for next year's event. So, let's put on our blinged out badge and take a little road trip to Cromwell, Connecticut, the Red Lion Inn Hotel for the NEC's annual convention. So, come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. Alright guys, and we are back from the NEC's annual convention this year in Cromwell, Connecticut. It was a lot of fun. It's also nice to be home after a very, very long weekend. There were a lot of awesome speakers. There was a lot of great stuff going on all weekend. But one of the things that I look forward to the most is being able to talk to fellow hobbyists and also other YouTubers and people that I've met from past shows and past years. We saw a lot of familiar faces this year. First and foremost was LR Bretz, Lucas Bretz. He came all the way up 
to the NEC's convention this year. It was his first year. He actually gave me a ton of awesome plants. I guess you could call it a trade because I gave him some pods as well. But I've got a bin with probably like 20 species of plants. I told him that I am a pro at killing plants and he gave them to me anyways. So hopefully what I'll be able to do is transfer all of these out to the greenhouse this year and hopefully some of them will survive um, my plant abuse, if you want to call it that. But we've got some really cool um, crypts. We've got some floating plants. Um, some really good specimens here with some nice root growth. Like, look at that root growth. Some val, um, like four or five different types of moss, um, like dwarf baby tears, all kinds of cool stuff. I just threw it all in this bin together. And honestly, I'm gonna plant it all out in the greenhouse within the next week, once it warms up a little bit, and we'll see what ends up surviving. That's what I'm gonna do with it. So, uh, thank you to Lucas for all of those great plants, and thank you for attending the NEC. It's good to see new faces at the show, especially people who are vending fish and plants. Another familiar face was Michael from Michael's Fish Room. Glad to see him. He made the drive and he set up a booth and he had a bunch of guppies and plecos for sale. Um, went out to eat with him. Great guy. Uh, he brought his son with him as well. Awesome kid. So those were the two YouTubers who were present. Uh, I also got to see Scott from the Nano Tank. If you haven't watched my video tour of his facility in Massachusetts, go check that out. If you live in the Massachusetts area, go visit the nano tank, go buy all kinds of nano fish and supplies from him, support your local fish stores, and uh, hopefully we'll see much more of him uh, as well. Also got to see uh, Lisa and Martin from Super Cichlids. If you guys are into cichlids, you should definitely go check out their online store. They've got a ton of fish food and other items for cichlids and other fish. They are in the process of opening their own store, I believe in Pennsylvania, and uh, it looks like a big job. So I got to hear sort of some of the inside details of what they're going through uh, in order to open the store. If you don't follow them, you should definitely go check out their Facebook page, especially if you're interested in how fish stores are put together because they're doing a step-by-step -step series with photos, uh, all of the steps to putting their store together. I'm also trying to convince them to get on YouTube. So Lisa and Martin, if you're watching, I think you should start filming videos right now, right before you open your doors because people want to see everything you guys are doing and the more you share, the more people will watch, the more people will buy, right? And that's good for everyone. I also got to see Jason from San Francisco Bay Brand Ocean Nutrition, longtime friend. You've probably seen a few videos of me and Jason on this channel in the past. Uh, it's nice to see big brands, big manufacturers support small shows like the NEC and San Francisco Bay Ocean Nutrition is definitely one of those companies. I was able to pick up a few samples of some different items that we'll test out in the coming weeks or months as time allows. This is Betta Spa or SPA. It's a water conditioner for your Betta fish which includes uh, Indian almond leaf extract. Kind of cool item there. There's also this thing that I've wanted to test out for the better part of a year now. It's kind of hard to find, it's kind of expensive, but it's instant baby brine shrimp. They actually hatch the baby brine shrimp for you and then they put it in like a suspension of liquid so that it stays preserved and it's ready to go when you have a surprise spawn of fish. You can use this little glass jar of instant baby brine shrimp to feed your fish fry um, in case of an emergency, which is a really cool item. Anyone that's bred fish knows that sometimes you just get a really bad batch of baby brine shrimp that you're hatching. 
and that could lead to the death of all of your fry um, if you don't have anything to feed them. Oftentimes when fry are really small, they need to be fed constantly. And if you lose an entire day or two or three worth of uh, batches of baby brine shrimp that you're hatching, for whatever reason, it could mean the death of all of your fry. So this is a really cool item. I'm probably gonna keep it on the shelf until something like that happens, and then I'll use it and I'll film it and I'll talk more about it. But really cool little item here. It's something that everyone should probably have in their breeding toolkit if you're breeding fish. Um, also, it's really good for corals and stuff like that too. So kind of cool to see there. And then two other little food items from San Francisco Bay Ocean Nutrition are just some betta pellets. Um, I've got a few bettas in my fish room and uh, we'll be talking and doing a lot more with bettas uh, now here in the future with betta oasis. So it's nice to see some different varieties of betta food. So we'll be playing with these as well. All right, who else did we see at the NEC? We saw Tom from ZooMed. Tom is another good friend who works for another great company, ZooMed. We picked up their product catalog to see if they've got anything new to take a look at. And one of the items that I'm interested in is maybe upgrading my T5 high output lights over my turtle tank and installing ZooMed's UVB bulbs. Basically, all of your tube lights, um, T5 high outputs, everything like that, they don't have UVB, so it's not really benefiting your turtles. However, ZooMed does have a bulb specifically for that. So your turtles can get a little bit of UVB, even if they're just swimming along the surface of the water, they don't necessarily have to go to the basking platform to get that UVB from your traditional basking bulb. So interesting little item there. I might have to take a look at those in the near future. Another great company, ZooMed, supporting the NEC, um, big company supporting a small organization. Always great to see. All right, we also picked up some, uh, some free magazines here. It's called the Aquarium Hobbyist Magazine. If you guys didn't know, this is a free publication which has some really amazing photography inside. And uh, you can go online and sign up for it for free and hopefully get some inspiration for some of your next aquariums and projects that you're working on. A lot of good knowledge in magazines. I feel like this generation of hobbyists doesn't subscribe to enough magazines, enough publications, collect enough books um, because everyone's just watching videos like this one. But I'm here to encourage you to go subscribe to Aquarium Hobbyist Magazine if you'd like. Uh, you can go to AquariumHobbyistMagazine.com and pick up a subscription absolutely for free. All right, so what did we do at the NEC as my aquarium box? Well, we had a gigantic table, and five tables in fact, set up with a huge variety of products, uh, mostly my aquarium box stuff, and we had a big influence um, on the show, I feel like. It was a lot of fun. Three of the, my favorite products that I brought, I'll share with you real quick. Um, they were very popular at the show. People loved them, I love them, and I'm looking forward to using these more in my own aquariums uh, and my own scapes over time. The first is the trumpet pod. This little pod <laughs> maybe doesn't look too appealing in its shape and size, but for things like shrimp and little crayfish and maybe even little plecos, this is a perfect hide, a perfect cave, and uh, they just look really cool on the bottom of, of an aquarium. You just put a few of these in between the little notches of your pieces of driftwood, just like sort of tucked under your pieces of driftwood, um, in between the driftwood and the substrate and any aquascaping stones you have, and they just add a lot of character and add more hiding places to your tanks. These will float for a day or two, and then they sink. And they're actually really durable. They're very, it's a very woody pod. Uh, it's got a very thick wall to it, and uh, they will last for a very long time. 
So that's a cool item to have in your tanks. We were selling those this weekend. We also featured these in a recent My Aquarium box. So if you're not subscribed to My Aquarium box, you're not getting this stuff first. So definitely go check out My Aquarium box if you want cool stuff like this every single month in your box. All right, now here's a sneak peek on some items that might be coming up in future My Aquarium boxes. These things we sold at the NEC and people love them. I love them too. This one here is a Brazil nut husk. I believe we talked about this a few weeks back um, when I just had a sample of this. We have now done our first big import order of Brazil nut husks. These things are very similar to a coconut. However, they're a lot heavier and they're a lot denser. These things sink right away. They've got a lot of character. They got a lot of texture, a lot more so than a coconut. And uh, if you uh, can picture a Brazil nut in your mind, or maybe use Google, um, like eight of those suckers fit inside this thing and this is just a husk that protects it from wildlife. So a really cool item here, very durable, very woody, very thick item, which will basically last forever in your aquarium. You put this on the bottom of like a blackwater biotope Amazon River type tank with discus or apistos or angelfish or quarry cats or plecos or shrimp and it's going to look amazing. Things are going to use this as a place to hide and uh, it's just something that adds more character to the bottom of your tank. I was also thinking about using this top rim here and just using a little bit of uh, super glue, cyanoacrylate super glue and attaching some moss to the top of this thing. Wouldn't that look cool if there's like flame moss just sort of coming off the top here along the, the edge? I think that would look super cool. Anyways, that was one that we had, the Brazil nut husk. And then the last one is the Gorilla Pod. These things, I think they're more commonly known as monkey pods, but these things are like two or three times bigger than any monkey pods I've ever seen. So we're calling them Gorilla Pods. We are importing them from Brazil and they will show up in a My Aquarium box in the very near future. So if you want to get your hands on one of these things, definitely go and subscribe. Um, they will be on our website soon as well, but everyone gets first pick at all of this great stuff uh, through My Aquarium box. So go ahead and subscribe if you want. Um, stuff like this will be coming in the mail and we are doing lots of big import orders on pods and other awesome things um, now and in the future as well. Anyways, those were three items that I really liked from this year's NEC and I think people had a lot of fun at the show. I know I did. Anyways guys, that's basically it for the show. If I saw you there, um, it was nice to see you there. If I didn't see you there, make sure you're there next year. It's a lot of fun. It's great to come out, support uh, fellow hobbyists. Great to get rid of all of your stuff, do your spring cleaning in your fish room, and toss it all in the giant auction. I didn't get a chance to buy anything at this year's auction. I was just way too busy with the My Aquarium Box stuff. But maybe next year. We'll have to see. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the inside look at the NEC and everything that went on there. If you are not a member of a local aquarium club, I would highly suggest you look around in your area to see what's nearby. Then maybe you can join and go to events like this in the future. And if you live in the New England area, make sure to look up the NEC on Facebook so that you don't miss next year's event. Anyways guys, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.